Is the pump a better feeling than coming like Arnold claims on pumping iron? Fucking no. If the pump was as good as an orgasm, I wouldn't leave the gym ever. I wouldn't skip a day. Okay, Anabolic Academy. This is the show on serious and cellular bodybuilding where I take questions from Instagram or my email or in person and I answer them on the show. So my Instagram is serious and silliness. My email is Uncle John at 1201 Gmail. My other email is John underscore Olivia at Yahoo. Or uh, just fucking when you see me, ask me a goddamn question. I'll answer it on the show. So this is a short one because I don't have a lot of questions. But I do have some, and some of them are very interesting. Uh, two of them are from, one is from a guy from work who asked me, and another one is from a kid from the gym who asked me. So, but we are going to take the Instagram questions first because they are priority. Okay. So, uh, Fran is the man. Ask me one, two, three, four, five questions. So the first one is, if someone has small calves, what advice would you give to help them grow bigger. What, what always helped me was um, high volume with calves, high volume, um, supersets, uh, drop sets um, I, until they burn. Uh, and I would only do calves like once a week, but my calves grew relatively quickly. And I've heard of guys doing that same high volume type of workout with drop sets and supersets. Um, except they would do it like twice or three times a week if necessary. So you have to kind of figure it out. I'm a, with calves, I'm a firm believer of um, high volume uh, till it burns, drop sets, supersets. But if once a week isn't good, you're going to have to, you're going to have to do it two or three times a week. And I think calves is the, one of the exceptions to the rule where, you could you could kind of kill your calves and they repair quicker um, than a normal muscle. I think it has something to do with the muscle fibers. I'm not exactly sure, but because you do a lot of walking and a lot of strain, uh, they're built to take more punishment, if you will, if that makes sense. Um, I'm, I can't go into detail. I did not do my due diligence with research to that question. I'm just giving you what works for me and what I know. Normally, if a question is... Something I need to research, I will, but today was a long day and I just literally just sat down. It's 10 o'clock at night to do this, but that's the basics. Okay. I just, normally I give more detail. Well, that is basically the basics. Next question, which pro bodybuilder most resembles your physique when you competed? Ugh, I don't know. Who's the worst pro bodybuilder out there? <laughs> I was never that good. I mean, if you see the picture I put on Instagram, um, that's pretty much the best I have a look. And that was 2014 Brooklyn Grand Prix, where I won the masters overall. And I was only 181 pounds and I'm five foot eight. Um, and that was the best I ever looked. Uh, I don't know. I had a long torso. So some people say I had a torso like Mike Matarazzo. So I had a long torso. Um, honestly, I, I don't know, man. I, 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 I always admired great bodybuilders. I was never, I was never genetically gifted to be a great bodybuilder. I I didn't have that type of, you know, genetics and bodybuilding gifts to go forward. And I, I can't really compare myself to any bodybuilder really only that one time one person said you have a midsection like mike matarazzo because i have a long torso but other than that like i don't know like i have no clue man i just admired those guys and knew i got into my 30s and i'm like well i'm never gonna look like that so but that is a pretty good question though thank you i appreciate the question okay next question if you're in charge of the ifbb npc what changes would you make to help bodybuilding more mainstream? Well, uh, okay, a couple of things here. I don't want bodybuilding to be mainstream. I like it as a niche sport. 
And I think it is as mainstream as it's going to be uh, because they have so many classes. So like so many girls are into it now and so many guys like, so you have men's physique and classic physique and because of classic physique, you have the uh, classic physique winner, which is Olympia winner, which is Bumstead. And he is a household name to all these kids in the gym. They don't even know who the open Mr. Olympia is. They think he's Mr. Olympia and he's not, you know, he's the classic physique Olympia. Um, I think it's as mainstream as it's going to get, you know, back in the day when you threw somebody in a movie, that was huge. Like when Pump and Iron came out and it was on the big screen, you know, you young guys don't realize how, movies really drove the uh society it was a ref- movies were a reflection on society during the 70s 70s 80s and 90s what was happening in the real world was, so then the people would make movies about it so they they knew that bodybuilding was starting to blow up with the arnold and so on and so forth so they made a documentary about it and because of that documentary was in the movies and you got to remember, like, in the 70s, going to the movies was everybody's favorite pastime. You either you either did that or you were outside hanging out bullshitting with people. There was no Instagram. There was no social media. You had There was no cable. Maybe some of the neighborhoods had cable. Most cable and most neighborhoods didn't. You had what? You had channel 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. And 13 was a kid's channel, right? It was PBS. So you had uh, fucking you know, seven channels to choose from and you would only watch what was on there. It's not like TV now where you have all these options. So you were the outside bullshitting, hanging out in the neighborhood or talking to your neighbor or whatever, but, you know, whatever, playing with your kids, whatever the kid, even the kids were out uh, in the street, riding their bikes, making fake ramps. So going to the movies was like huge. So I think that was the only time bodybuilding was ever truly mainstream because Arnold made pump and iron then he went on to be a movie star. Lou Ferrigno went on to do, do the incredible Hulk. And that was the, that's the only time the true Olympias were household names. Everybody knew who Schwarzenegger was. Everybody knew who Lou Ferrigno was. Everybody knew who, um, Franco Colombo was, you know, Franco, my father never liked bodybuilding, but Franco Colombo was my father's favorite because he was from, from Italy. So that was his favorite, you know? Um, so I, I like the idea that it is a niche sport. That is just that it's like you're opening Pandora's box and this is a whole different world. I wouldn't want to make it as mainstream as it is now. I think it is going, I think it as social media is concerned it is as mainstream as you're going to get it is never going to get onto the level of like you know football or baseball or soccer where it's accepted it's also not going to be very much accepted because it's just the unspoken law that people use steroids period end of story it's not even like we don't even deny it anymore the guys that compete use anabolics so i don't think it's ever going to be really mainstream and i kind of like it that way now what i will say is if i was in charge of the ifbb npc what I would do is charge an extra five dollars for the live stream. Charge an extra five dollars for people to come to the door that want to watch the, the bodybuilding show. Charge an extra five dollars for people that want to enter the bodybuilding show and put that extra money into the prize money. Because if you see the lineups today, the Tampa Pro lineup came out, and again, it's ten thousand for. Number one, number one spot is 10 grand, right? It's the, you know, you got to understand 10 grand after taxes, you're taking home 52% of that. You could have a lot of write offs and so on and so forth, but you're not seeing $10,000. So it, some of these guys, it costs more money for them to compete, especially when you're not like a top dude, like a Hunter Labrada who's doing Tampa. Um, where he's making a ton of money on endorsements and you know social media and so on and so forth, and he's odds are he's going to win. So that's just an extra, you know, uh, fifty five hundred in his pocket, whatever it comes out to, right? I would, I would. That's what I would do. I wouldn't increase the, the amount of money tremendously in one spot because it hurts too much. But if you increase the ticket sales by five dollars, the live stream by five dollars, 
the entrance, the entrance into the show by five dollars. Then take that additional money and put it toward the um, the prize money uh, because nobody's entering these contests. It's ridiculous. I mean, the Tampa Pro came out today, and there was seven. There's seven guys in the open, and the only two names I recognized was Hunter Labrada and Nate Spear. And I only know Nate Spear because he's a friend and he's been on the show plenty of times, right? Um, the other guys have no clue who they are. And I messaged John De La Rosa because I'm pretty sure that he was doing Tampa because he had told me he was doing Tampa. And he said, yeah, but his name just isn't on the list. So there's your one and two, Hunter and John De La Rosa. You know, it's really not rocket science. I'm really not a Messiah, Nostradamus. There's your one and two guys. That's that's it. The the the, the Tampa, unless things change and people jump jump in, I, 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 it just blows me away. So if the, if that's the problem, if the bodybuilders are saying that it's just that's not worth it to compete because of the money, then that's what I would do. But other than that, that's about it. Okay, next question: Have you ever worked with one of the gurus during your bodybuilding career? N no, and you know what? I wish I would have. I wish I would have spent the money and had got a guy like if I would have, I don't like, I wouldn't do the online thing. I would do something with somebody close. If I would have um, gotten somebody to help me, it would have been one of three names. It either would have been Thackeray, King Kamali, or Oscar Arden, because they're all New York guys and i could easily just go and 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 take a ride and have him look at me and change what he's got to do and so on and so forth and those are the three biggest names in new york right i mean Thackeray and oscar arden are legends in the training in the training part and king kamali is a legendary bodybuilder who is a really good trainer so i would have went with those three guys because after i just i just you know i would just Get, you know, the owner of the gym guy, Del Corso trained me and he's not a bad trainer. He's just not as good as those guys and nobody is. Uh, and if you want those guys, you got to spend the money, right? It's not cheap, you know? Uh, so no, unfortunately I did not have the experience and I wish I would have because there were things that happened backstage that I didn't know what to do or got the wrong advice or so on and so forth. And then I found out later on, like, you know, talking to Fackery, having him on the show or having King Kamali on the show or, so on and so forth. Like, oh, I didn't do that. You mean that could have been the difference of me winning or not? I didn't do that. So if you are thinking about competing and you have the means, please spend the money and get somebody really good. And if you are in the New York, New Jersey area, those are the three guys I would go after if you have the money. Oscar Arden, Fackery, King Kamali. These guys are, you know, on the East Coast are in New York. New Oscar Arden, Fackery, is, they're probably the two best on the East Coast. Uh, and those three are probably the best in New York, New Jersey. Uh, okay. Is the pump a better feeling than coming like Arnold claims on pumping iron? Fucking no. If the pump was as good as an orgasm, I wouldn't leave the gym ever. I wouldn't skip a day. And I think the majority of people would go to the gym. I think every person would go to the gym if they could achieve the sensation of an orgasm. That is, that was just a bullshit line that Arnold made up to just fucking make the, just make it that much more theatrical. That's all it was. It was ridiculous to compare the pump to an orgasm. The orgasm is like an, ex especially when you're young, when you're like 19 and you first haven't, it's like, it's like your head blows off. It's, it's not even. It's insane. I'm 47 and I'm, I wouldn't change. I wouldn't exchange. No, not even close. No. All right. Next question. This is from Vigor Selliness. I apologize if I uh, ruined your Instagram name, but uh, Vigar, if I, I, if, I, if I ruined your name, I truly apologize. Am I still on one gram of test a week? No. I actually took Jason Arns's, um device and I lowered it to 500 and I did that when did they tell me two weeks ago I lowered it to 500 so right now 
all I'm using is 500 milligrams of uh, testosterone and four units of growth. That's what I use. That's what I'm on. And it seems, I wish I would have done that 10 years ago because I would have never dicked around with orals and trend and masteron and so on and so forth. Because I mean, I know GH is expensive and it takes a long time to see results. But when you do see results, you go, you look in the mirror, you go, ah, I see it now. But, you know, you don't see it for six months, you know. But now I look at it and I see it and I go, okay, well, this is what I'm using. It's a lot safer and uh, not as hard as on your body. And it's a little bit more expensive, but in the long run, I think it's it's worth it. All right. So the two questions that I got, one of them from work. So my friend... My friend has a big belly. Everybody at work has a big belly, okay? Because nobody's into. There was like three guys that are into fitness, and only I'm the only one that's into bodybuilding. The other two guys are into fitness, right? They just kind of stay in shape, and good for them, you know. This one guy comes over to me and he goes, "John, how do I lose this stomach?" So I said, "I'm going to answer that question on my show tonight." So here's your answer: Stop eating, you fat fuck. I mean, you eat like a pig. I see you eating at lunch. It's amazing how you shovel that much food in your fat face. <laughs> All right. The real answer is you can't spot reduce. You can't look at a body part like your stomach and go, I just have to lose this stomach. You're going to, what you're going to have to do, like everybody else, is clean up your diet, make smart food choices, get to a gym, do some cardio, do any kind of workout that you enjoy. It doesn't have to be weight training, but a workout that you enjoy. If you want to do like MMA classes, you want to do CrossFit, you want to buy a bike and Right outside, uh, you, if you like weight training, go to the gym, um, whatever it is, and eat clean, cut out all the garbage like soda and bread, make small food choices, drink water, and stay healthy and start working out like three days a week. At the beginning, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whenever you can fit it in. And believe me that it is going to come off. It, it, it will come off that easy. Because your fucking stomach is so big <laughs> that if you changed one thing, you fat bastard, that it would come off. <laughs> All right. Next question from a, a young kid in the gym. Wanted to know how he could improve his shoulders, his cap shoulders. So, okay. So I basically told, I always had a problem with cap shoulders myself. Okay. So what I had basically told him was, yeah, I do rear delts first and it kind of warms everything up. So I'll do two to three movements on rear delts. Okay. Um, I wish I could show you because there's a, I can't really show you on here without actually showing you in the gym. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll go to, maybe I'll make a video, go to the gym and train shoulders and show you. Like it's one thing I don't do on this channel is actually go to the gym and give advice while I'm working out in the gym. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Okay. Anyway, there's this one rear shoulder uh, superset thing. It was John Meadows, rest in peace. And he, it was, it's fantastic. And basically you have your, I'm trying to explain it. It was actually passed down from a friend of mine, uh, Ian. He's been on the show before. My friend, Ian Hedek, he showed me. And, uh, you're basically putting your chest on the inclined bench, okay? So you reversed. And then you you do grab 10-pound dumbbells. And first you're doing what looks like swings with the 10-pound dumbbells. And then, then you're doing like, you know, um, pullbacks with high, so it hits your rear delts. And then you're doing Ws. And then you're doing like these low swings. And it really, really, really hits your, hits your rear delt. Um, and then sometimes I'll just go right into... Uh, a pec deck, reverse pec deck, and and hit the um, rear delts, and then by that point, then I'm ready for heavy presses. So then I do heavy. So then I told the kid, then then you do heavy presses, whatever it is, dumbbell, barbell. After the heavy presses, then I really start concentrating on front delts and side delts. So I do a front delt, but I don't go heavy. And it's the same thing with side delts. I don't go heavy and I do a lot of drop sets um, and I, and I really hit the burn. Um, and then it seemed to be the only thing that have actually improved my shoulders. Not that I have fucking 
Kim Kamali, Kim Kamali shoulders. I never did, but the improvement was from the high volume um, drop set. So like, for example, if I did side laterals, I would line up uh, the 30 pound dumbbells, the 20 pound dumbbells, the 10 pound dumbbells, and then I would do drop sets, 30, uh, 30 20, 10, and each time going to failure, right? And then I would do that three or four times, three or four drop sets with those. And believe me, you know, you could barely pick your arms up by the time you're done. It is a tremendous burn um, when you're done with that kind of drop set for side laterals. And then I would do the same thing with front laterals. You know, I would do uh, first I would do the front with uh, dumbbells like this. And then I would do three sets like this. And then I twist it and do it like this. Um, and then I do upright rows. And I and, and and it would be to the point where it was a tremendous burn in my shoulders where I could not lift my my shoulders. And that seemed to be the only way that my shoulders could grow and be a little bit capped off uh, the best I could ever make it. Because, you know, I would always do heavy, heavy side laterals, heavy dumbbell presses. I, I still do heavy dumbbell presses. Like that to me, that's a that's a staple, right? But I wouldn't see any growth. So um it was actually Guy Del Corso when I went to Guy's gym when he was training me for a contest that showed me the drop sets because he's very much into high volume drop sets, supersets, extremely high volume. He's very much into that. And uh the only thing that that really worked on with me, the high volume was shoulders. Everything else, I kind of had to keep it, you know, heavy, like chest, back, legs, so on and so forth. And he was the one that actually taught me the, the drop set and so on and so forth and blah, 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 blah. So that, that would be my advice. If you have, uh, if you have, uh, you know, if you have problems growing your shoulders, that would be, that would be my advice. Now that's what worked for me. And I think that is probably the best way to go because if training heavy like if i like my chest grew when i trained heavy chest my legs grew when i trained heavy legs when i did heavy squats my back grew when i did heavy one arm dumbbells or rows but if that's not working in a particular another particular body part like for me shoulders then you have to try another type of training and the high volume is what I switched to and it worked and it continues to work because I still do it. It's still a tremendous pump. It's still a lot of breakdown on the, on the muscle. Um, and I see results from it. That's what I would recommend. Anyway, I am actually done with anabolic Academy. You have my prediction early for the Tampa pro, although I will put it up on Instagram. My prediction is going to be Hunter De La Rosa in two, Nate Spear in three. That is going to be my prediction. I'm going to put it on Instagram the day before. We'll see if I get it right again. And until then, remember, like, subscribe, share, show this to everybody. Say, hey, this guy, John, he knows what he's doing. He's really good at podcasting. He knows bodybuilding. He's very handsome. He's very charismatic. And uh, he gives away free shit. I don't, but say that so they join. That's it. <laughs>